The film Captain America The Winter Soldier is coming to theaters. In comic books, the Winter Soldier is Captain America's former sidekick, brainwashed and turned against his own country by a Soviet spy network. Fortunately, forcibly causing someone to betray everyone and everything they ever loved and believed in is just something in the movies. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward and this is a special Wired edition of Science Friction, the series where I break down the real science behind comic book and sci-fi superheroes and tell you how to become superhuman. To brainwash someone is to cause them to drastically change their attitudes and beliefs. The term brainwashing was first used by journalist Edward Hunter in 1950 after American POWs falsely confessed to committing biological warfare in Korea on behalf of the U.S. government. Psychologists Robert J. Lifton wanted to find out exactly what the Chinese did. So he interviewed these former POWs and wrote a book explaining the step-by-step -step process of thought reform. The first step is an assault on identity. You do not like ice cream. Do you know how many cows were hurt trying to give you your ice cream? Agree with me that you don't like ice cream. Hello? Are you, are you really sad, or are you pretending to be sad? <laughs> Alright, I, I think he's really sad. I, good work, everybody. Give yourself a round of applause. Are they giving you enough pillows? Are you ready to talk about how horrible you are for all the stuff with the ice cream? I know you're feeling really down on yourself, but you know what? It's not your fault. You know whose fault it is? Ben and Jerry. Here, I'm gonna turn on the camera. This is gonna make you feel a lot better. I want you to read this statement, denouncing Ben and Jerry. And then I'm gonna give you a sniper rifle. I want you to shoot Jerry. Don't worry about Ben. We've got a guy who wants to sell over. He's gonna take care of it. It's that easy. But the oppressor does need to have absolute control over the subject. They need to be able to disrupt sleep, restrict diet, and physically punish the individual. This all makes scientific study of brainwashing ethically impossible. You can't replicate these conditions without causing grave injury to your subjects. Of course, that didn't stop the CIA from conducting their own brainwashing experiments in 1953. The program was called MK Ultra and used hypnosis, electroshock treatment, radiological implants, and LSD on unwitting civilians. After the program was exposed and shut down, it was determined that the CIA had learned absolutely nothing because the CIA operatives weren't trained as scientists. The only thing they accomplished was to put a lot of innocent people through a harrowing ordeal. Captain America would not have approved. I am right. So even though there are no rigorous scientific studies providing hard evidence of brainwashing, many psychologists still believe it's possible. Why is that? That's because we've seen examples of dramatic attitude shifts outside experimental settings. In 1973, two armed men attempted to rob a bank in Stockholm, Sweden. The police showed up, and a hostage situation ensued that lasted six days. When the police attempted a rescue, they were attacked by the hostages, and the hostages tried to protect their captors. After being freed, one of the hostages set up a fund to pay for the robber's legal fees. From this event came the term Stockholm Syndrome. A year later, Patty Hearst was abducted. Within a very short period of time, she went from an unwilling hostage to an eager participant in a domestic terrorist group. Another reason psychologists believe in brainwashing is because our brains aren't nearly as static as we once thought they were. Up until 20 years ago, we thought the structure of our brain was fixed at adulthood. Now we know that multiple factors, such as pain, drugs, exercise, inactivity, temperature, the food we eat, can change the shape, size, and structure of our brain. Whenever our brains are introduced to a new stimulus, a neural pathway is formed. The information about that stimulus, its sound, meaning, and associations, are perceived by our senses and travel through those neural pathways to our brain. Repetition of that stimulus causes a physiological change in that neural pathway. It makes it stronger. The stronger the neural pathway, the more easily we accept those messages. That's why repetition is such a vital aspect of brainwashing. 
and modern technology has driven home just how easily our minds can be manipulated. If you apply electromagnetic fields to specific areas of the brain, you can pacify someone, cause them to hallucinate, even turn off their sense of morality. And recently, two scientists from the University of Washington have developed a way to remotely control another person's mind. Right now, you can only induce slight movements, and you can't do it to someone who's not willing. A slight movement is a far cry from forcibly changing someone's core values, but it's not hard to imagine a near future where someone combines modern technology with classic coercion methods and creates a frighteningly effective form of brainwashing. But until the day a totalitarian government or a monolithic corporate entity robs us of our free will and sense of self, enjoy your autonomy and your independent thought. And maybe keep an eye on your best friend, because for all you know, he may be a winter soldier. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Wired. If you want to check out more episodes of Science Friction, check out the link below.